So this video is section 6.10, something called complementary slackness. And we're going to be taking a look at our main theorem here, theorem 2, which basically says that uh, if x and y are each feasible for the primal and dual respectively, Then, uh, the problems, uh, well, you could say that x is the maximizer and y is the minimizer, or we can say that x and y are the optimizers. If and only if we get a nice relationship happening, and that is that, oops, let me not do that, s i times y i equals zero, and EI times XI equals zero. Okay, and then the I is running from however many variables are in either vector X or vector Y. So just to give you an idea of where this came from, you'll notice in our last last computational example, we had, um, I'm just gonna write down the solution that we had. We had uh, X1, X2, S1, S2, S3, and Y1, oops, sorry, I want to write my excess variables underneath and then my dual solutions underneath. We had uh, X and Y being 2 and 6, and 2 and 0, 0, and then we had E1 and E2 being 0, 0, Y1 was 0, 3 halves, and 1. Okay, and you might notice that this relationship that we're talking about is holding where we have uh, E1, oops, sorry, uh, let me get rid of the red, E1 times X1 equals 0, E2 times X2 equals 0, Y1 times S1 equals 0, oops, I was supposed to put my slack first, S2, Y2 equals 0, and S3, Y3 equals 0. Good. And so because X and Y are also feasible for the primal and the dual, and this relationship holds, we can say that um, X is the optimal solution for the primal, and this is the optimal solution for the dual. Good. Now why is that? Um, well, there's a couple of uh, computations that we want to make uh, before we actually prove this whole theorem. And I think um, it's worthwhile to actually see what some of this stuff is. That's why we're going to go through it in a little more depth. So in particular, suppose that we have our primal and dual set up as max uh, z equals c transpose x and w equals b transpose y, such that ax less than or equal to b. And so notice that this isn't the equal sign form, right? This isn't the standard form, this is our normal form. A transpose y greater than or equal to c, x greater than or equal to zero, y greater than or equal to zero. We're going to prove the theorem only in this case um, that we have uh, feasible points for our primal and our dual. And so um, one way you can define the slack variable, or the slack vector s, is that it's the difference between ax and b, right? And so that is, uh, let's see, do I want to say ax minus b or b minus ax? I think I want to say b minus ax, just to make sure that my s is going to be uh, positive, right? So s is greater than or equal to zero. And then sim if, if x is feasible. Similarly, over here, I can say that, um, our excess variable e, sorry about the the uh, notation here, this is not a column of the identity, this is the set of excess variables. We can define that to be a transpose y uh, minus c. Good. Now, um, consider the difference between uh, the solution that you get for your dual 
and the solution that you get for your primal. Um, now, as we get closer and closer to optimality, this amount goes to zero, right? And in fact, we know that uh, at optimality, we get zero between those two. And so, let's see if I can find another way of computing w minus z. Well, using our definitions up above here, we can say that this is equal to b transpose y minus c transpose x. Now I'm going to do a little trick. I'm going to use uh, this equation and substitute in for b. And then I'm going to use this equation and substitute in for c. And let's see what we get. So for b, I'm going to have uh, ax plus s transpose times y minus, now for c, I'm going to have uh, a transpose y, let's see, what am I going to, oh, uh, in fact, let's see, yes, a transpose y minus e, right, uh, transpose times x, good. Now let's see if I can work out a little bit of algebra. That's going to be x transpose a times a transpose y plus s transpose y minus in big parentheses. That's going to be y transpose a x minus e transpose times x. Right? And now remember that uh, x transpose a transpose y and y transpose a times x are actually the same amount. So what we end up with is s transpose times y plus e transpose times x. Okay, so that is the quantity that I'm interested in. w minus z is actually equal to s transpose y plus e transpose x. Good. Now, at optimality, w is equal to z, and so therefore we get that s transpose y plus e transpose x equals zero. Now, from this, I want to be able to say that this implies s transpose y equals zero and e transpose x equals zero. Now in general I can't say that. Why can I say that in this case? That's because uh, s is greater than zero, or equal to zero, y is greater than or equal to zero, uh, e is greater than or equal to zero, and x is greater than or equal to zero. <laughs> Everything is greater than or equal to zero here. So if this sum is equal to zero, that must mean that each of these pieces are equal to zero. And actually, if each of these pieces are equal to zero, because each vector is equal to zero, that means that each component must be equal to zero. Good. And that concludes our uh, look at the at a little sketch of a proof. Um, we're not going to prove it both ways. We're not going to uh, get too deep into this. I just wanted to show you um, why this would be a true statement here. Okay? And so we're going to look at how you how would how you're going to use complementary slackness to solve for a problem. If you know, like the dual solution, you can find the primal, or the primal from the primal you can find the solution to the dual. Okay, uh, it's almost ten minutes, so we're going to stop there and do another video on our example.